All right, we did it. <laughs> yes, we got through that. I'm telling y'all, I told you it goes so fast. It goes so fast when you're when you're doing because it's so much that you want to share, so much that we want to tell, and it's just like it's so hard to kind of condense it in that short period of time. But I really do want to try to talk a little bit more if you guys have just a few minutes and y'all know I got to run too but I want to tell I really want to talk about how you get through it because when I'm I'm dealing with stuff right now there's so much that's on me and so many things that I'm being challenged with and it's not even necessarily just affecting um has to do with me personally but it could be my children and some of the things that they're dealing with I can't help but as a mother, but to feel it and wish that I could come to their rescue or do something or, but I can't because in certain situations, my hands are completely tied. So when I'm going through that, what encourages me is one, I have my counselor because I have to call sometimes and like, listen, this is heavy. This is too much for me. I feel like I'm carrying the weight of the world. How do I get through this? You know what I mean? And then when I'm dealing with it, it's like, it feels like it wants to consume me. It feels like I, I it's so much and I'm, I'm going through it and then I'm working from home. So I'm home and I'm in it all the time. And I'm saying to myself, how do I get through this? How do you continue to have faith and trust God when you have all of these things going on? And it seems like you're stuck in the tar pit and it's just people pouring more and more and more. And it's like, Lord, I know you're going to rescue me. But can I have some air <laughs> until you do? Can I breathe until you do? And in the midst of all of that, the one thing is, is just knowing that God sees me, knowing that I can't do it alone and that I do need to have a good support system. And that's one thing I wanted to mention before the recording ended is keeping yourself surrounded. Watch who you surround yourself um, with. Because those people are what's pouring and feeding what you already feel. And you want to either feed it with positive stuff or feed it with negative stuff. But it's going to impact you one way or the other. So I'm doing a lot of talking now because I know I can. But I'm going to be quiet. But I, I want to hear from you guys when you're in the middle of it. Not when you've come out and everything is good. And it's like, oh, let me tell you, when you are in that moment, go back to that moment and, and feel that moment. How did you push through that? I, I know for me, I um, had another woman that I was kind of watching. I was kind of watching her quietly because I knew she was in nursing school, right? She went to my church and I was just observing her from the side and she was doing the thing. Like she was going to class and she was showing up and she like being in her uniform. And I was so impressed and literally just watching somebody else get through what you are going through yeah. is a key. Yeah. If you if I can see you do it, then maybe I can be motivated enough to try a little harder, to push a little further, to go a little longer because I see you doing it. Maybe I can do it. Maybe right. I can make it. You know, <laughs> and so that was a blessing just to have her in my life. And I told her later, I said, you know, you're one of the reasons why I made it through. Like, yes, there are people in our history and in our past, like they did it and but their odds were different. And I mean, that was the eighteen hundreds, right? <laughs> so yeah. like here we are, you know, in a more recent day and age and things are very different. So to see somebody who is, you know, a little older than me, like, you know, a peer and to have that mentorship, you know, is key because if I can see you do it, then it's achievable. It's possible. Maybe I can do it because I saw that you did. And so when she graduated, yeah. I was over the moon. I was like, that's it. I'm doing it. And yeah. Literally, I've been able to do that and help other people do it. So when I have a student who tells me that other teacher said so and so, I'm like, no, 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 that's what we're not going to do today. We yeah. are going to tell you that you're going to be a nurse. Yeah, period. you're going to be. Yeah, it's going to. It happen. may take some time. It may yeah. you may not go the same route somebody else does or take the same path, but you will get there. You know. So right. yeah, I told my son that when he he didn't graduate high school because he had to go, he didn't get you know pass certain classes, so he had to go to summer school. And we cried. We was all upset. I said, that's okay. Get it out. But you will graduate. Yeah. Even if it means that they hand you the paper and you don't get to physically walk down that aisle, you graduated. And he did. So, but what about you ladies? Um, 
what how do you um how do you get through it in that moment like going back to that moment miss verlaine how do you you know in the excruciating pain that you're in especially as a child how do you get through that and have the mindset that you had as a child to keep pushing Oh, that is such an interesting question because I have tools now, but I didn't have tools then. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I look back and it was, I think it was a, a feeling of that I had too much to do, to accomplish, mm. uh, to just give up, you know. Yeah. I wasn't sure that I would walk or dance or do anything again. But it, I think when I was in the midst of it, it, it was a real uh, need for me not to make the people around me feel guilty. Uh, my brother for having the more, my mom for being uh, upset and my poor dad, he ended up leaving the family the mm. year later because I think my mom was just at him all the time about make, letting that happen. And the interesting thing is that I really think as I look back at both events, um, I was trying to keep my dad there in the family. I think that's mm -hmm. why that accident happened because they had, did not have a good relationship. Wow. And I was like, I was sacrificing myself. I mean, of course I didn't know that consciously. Right. And I look back at what happened. I, I guess a part of me thought that it was gonna bring everybody together. And it, it, it split it all up, you know? And so that was that was difficult. And then when they got the stabbing, my love, John, had moved to San Francisco to start uh, a job there and everything. And and he came back, didn't he, after I got stabbed? So it, it's, when you look at things in the bigger picture, now getting through it in the middle of it is, I think, I think uh, the idea of God and, and Jesus and the energy of, of spirit uh, mm -hmm. sustain me. I really do in both examples. Uh, the fear lasted, you know, I still walk across the street when there's a mower going on. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and uh, don't go in dark garages. Uh, right. So, you know, that's there, but it, it now I really look at things. I, it, it's one of the tools I use now and you could use it yourself when you feel totally overwhelmed. We have two frontal lobes here. Yeah. And you put your third finger and your thumb there and you think about the worst thing that's happening, the worst thing that's happening, the worst thing that's happening. And what it does is it keeps the body organized while you're thinking those thoughts. Okay. And you've seen people when they've uh, had a movie, they're in the movies and something bad happens, they go, oh my God, that's yeah, I, I do that when my kids get on my nerves. I'd be like this. All right, y'all. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And go all the way. What's the worst thing can happen? Oh, let's see. I guess I could kill them. <laughs> and then myself. You know, and then you've done the worst thing that could happen. And you can go on with your day. And so these are little things that can happen. There's certainly meditation, you know, but dropping a, a, a pebble. From, I imagine from my third eye, I just drop a pebble, like everything below is a lake and it's going down to my belly button and there's a sandy bottom and the, it just drops, you know, down. And then um, the thoughts start to come up and I just drop them down again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it helps to quiet the mind. The mind yeah. is so busy all the time, you know, mm -hmm. that is we just have to quiet as much as we can. But getting through it at the time, I can't say I did a good job of it. I did get help from a counselor in Monterey uh, when I moved back to Carmel for three years. And, and he was very helpful. But when I took that course and I learned about the different parts of us, you could say there's a part of me that's totally messed up and so upset and so crazy. And the, the other part, well, we're gonna get through this. So it's like your mother is talking you through it and saying, we can get through this. And the other part is going, no, it's awful. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you send that part to say, if you could get through this and it wasn't so upsetting and it wasn't so angrifying, angrifying is a new word. <laughs> yeah, we're going to write that one down. I, I caught that. <laughs> yeah, I intended to the creative part of your being to come up with ways that that can happen and then bring yeah. them together, mom and the little child 
We still have yeah. ch a child in us, all of us, you know. Oh, I know but, I do. I'm just as crazy and silly. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that's what I suggest <laughs> in the midst of this turmoil and upset. And I can't have, it won't work. You know, bring them apart. Bring them apart. And then it's not yeah. all of me that's upset. It's just a part of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good stuff. What about you, Shayel? In the midst of it, how do you how do you deal with it when when you go back to that day? <laughs> Speak in, to them. In, in the midst <laughs> of um, you know that situation and other situations that um, you know started to happen, you know when when you had when you're used to having um, your your husband and that second income. And then when you suddenly lose um, that, then you start to experience other losses. And that's what happened with me. Mm -hmm. um, I lost my home, um, you know, and, and, you know, things just started to kind of spiral and I ended up being homeless for a little while. And, mm. but, you know, <clears throat> with me, my faith carries me through and my, um, my ability to be able to stay strong through situations because I have children who are watching me. I have two, you know, all my children are grown, but I have two daughters um, who, you know, are watching me and, and how I, you know, handle mm -hmm. things, you know, so I, I need for them to learn how to handle things without falling apart. Um, I'm also the oldest of, you know, six children. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, you know, always been the example, you know, for them. Um, and I just kind of, you know, keep it together when I need to, because I was, you know, working and everything. Um, but when I'm in my alone time is when I do my crying is when I do, you know, my praying and writing and, um, I cry most of the time. And, um, you know, I just, try to um you know uh um, stay strong enough and, and stay in the scriptures and and like i said i have a mentor who helped me through all of that um <clears throat> because i could not understand things i couldn't see my way um through a lot she was there with me when i was losing my home um mm. and i didn't want to i was sitting in the dark i didn't want to let go of my home um but i lost it uh, ultimately and she was there for me to help me to um, get through it um so i you know uh, that's why i say relationships are so uh important and you know eventually i i did have to go through some counseling um so you know it's all of the tools that you equip yourself with you know during the journey mm -hmm. and um the thing that I like to do is to, uh, you know, be the vessel that God uses to encourage other women who are not only going through the loss of, of a husband or a child, um, uh, but just other losses as well. And that's what I want to, you know, work with other widows about is some of the other losses that they experience as well. Yeah. yeah. I, and I think that's great because, I mean, you know, what I hear from everyone, it's a mindset thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it, you have to learn how to control your mindset. And and like Ms. Verlaine said, we have different parts of us that we deal with. You know, we have the little, the little girl and then we have the angry part and then we got the really giddy, happy part. But all of those pieces make up who we are. But we have to make a decision in our mind of who we're going to allow to have the control, who we're going to give the wheel to. And if we give the wheel to the angry person, we're always going to have uh, impacts within our relationships. We're always going to have health issues and stress and, you know, frustrations with ourselves. But if we learn how to yield to the spirit of God, as with all of us, there had to have been something, some kind of spirit to keep us in those moments, to keep us to pushing and going through where some people didn't make it through. That's you right. know, some people may have taken their own lives or some people may have resorted to drugs or alcohol or going crazy and in mental institutions because they just can't handle it. The other thing is you gotta have a way of release. 
whether you're writing, whether you're centering yourself and, you know, you know, clearing your thoughts in your mind, you have to have a way of release because if you have something that builds up with pressure so long for so much with so much pressure, it's not going to do anything but explode, but pop. Mm -hmm. So we got to have a way of a release to ease some of the pressure. And then after we ease some of the pressure, we have to say, okay, we need positive people to surround us. We need a support system of people around us that's going to speak positive in our lives. Yeah. Just like Miss um, Anita said, you, you, she, she speaks into the positive into those students' lives now. Oh, you're going to be okay. You're going to make it. Yep, it's hard and it is challenging, but you will get through this because it's important for us to be able to see ourselves in that positive perspective and have people, you know, just like the Bible says, how do you, if you hear the, how, what it is, what is it? How do you hear the, the word and, unless the preacher is preaching? I forget what the scripture is now. But you you got to hear it. Somebody has to tell you, somebody has to speak it. Just like God spoke the word, the, the world into existence. You have to speak into our spirits because we are, are, are in the likeness of God, so we also can speak into each other. So I think it's important to have, yes, Ms. Verlaine. Yes, and I, the thing that I see with these different parts is that they are holding different beliefs. Now, what are those beliefs? They're beliefs about health, about wealth, about love, and about your self-expression. And so you say, well, I don't know what I believe. Well, look at your life. Mm -hmm. Life is a biofeedback system. It shows you what you believe. So if you don't have enough money, there's a part of you that believes you shouldn't have enough money. Right. And there's a part of you that says, well, I'd like to have money, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And so you ask, what is it doing for me not to have money? That's what the difference is in this concept is you're asking, what is it doing for me? Not what it's trying to stop me or how mean it is or how bad it is. It's it's what is it doing for me? And people ask, well, I don't have to pay high taxes. I don't have to uh, uh, work so hard. I, you know, I can relax more, you know? Well, what's funny is when you, when you go to the, the part of you that wants the money, they say, I can relax. I, can <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry so much, you know? And so it's like, we end up, we've got, oh my God, they're so similar, but they've got a different belief. And then you bring them together. And you have them hug each other. Yeah. Bring them to your heart and say, we are going to work together. We're going to work together. And those and beliefs come from our experiences. And life. from the TV and from and our from, parents. Yes, from Ooh, our encounters, our relationships. Yeah. Keeping them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're absolutely right. And basically, when you have all of those different pieces that have established their own beliefs about different things based on the experiences, we have to bring them in and change the narrative. Exactly. Yeah. Like, 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 um, Miss Anita said, you got to change the narrative. And once you change the narrative and start to um, take control over our thoughts and our minds, we start to have at least a better inner peace about what's going on and how to yes. live life. Because we can't always change the circumstances, but we can change how we deal with them. That's what my mom used to tell me. You mm -hmm. can't change people and you can't change mm -hmm. around you, but you, what you can do is change how you deal with it. And that's but the then, difference. By you changing the way you deal with it, you start changing the circumstances. Come on here, Mr. Lane. You're speaking in here. I'm about to pass the offering plate. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I kind of like to think of it as like a refrigerator, you know? Like you put all the things in your fridge that you think, you know, goes in there. And then other people put stuff in your fridge that you allow. Yeah. yeah. And then some things yeah. go sour, right? Yeah. Some yeah. things so stay fresh. And you yeah. get to decide what's going to stay in there and what things need to go. And the mm -hmm. more you make yeah. that decision every day, the more you're going to be healthier in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit. And then what you have to realize is that, you know what, this whole situation is outside of me. Like I can't control the temperature of this fridge. That's nope. God's job. So now yep. if I look to him as my source, then Ooh, I, like I can be better at choosing what comes and what goes, what Ooh, stays I mean. and what leaves. Because mm -hmm. now I've surrendered my refrigerator to the manufacturer. That's right? a good analogy, Ms. <laughs> and I like to eat so I can relate to the refrigerator, okay? I'm about to throw some Me stuff too. out. <laughs> well, that is so true. And that's where it comes up to say, thy will be done. 
That's when it comes up. You say, I release, I let go, I let the spirit run my life. And how do you let them run your life? By listening to your guidance, because they yeah. can see everything. And listen, they can clear away the people that bother you. They can give you a new house. They can give you a love. They can correct mm -hmm. your health, everything. But we think, oh, we've got free will. You know, we can, we can make our own decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Turn it over. Yeah. And it's so powerful. And when I did that, oh my God, every time. thy will be done instead mm -hmm. of, God, please do this for me. Do that for me. Do this. No, no. Mm -hmm. And know the desires of your heart. And you have the desires of your heart will manifest if you let go. Let go. Because you don't know how great the response can be. The things that have happened in my life, traveling around the world, being paid to travel around the world to help other people and give speeches yeah. and 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 inter, you know be coaching other people i mean i would never have been able to come up with that mm -hmm. are you kidding you want to go to japan and go japan right right <laughs> i couldn't afford I such a thing i couldn't there's no such thing it would even come to my mind and then to yeah. hong kong and australia and bali and da da da, mm -hmm. da da so what happened i said thy will be done that will mm -hmm. And, and he's I gonna provide messenger. for what he's calling you to do. I could talk to y'all ladies all night. Listen, I better get ready to wrap up so we can go to get this boy to his dance. But um, th this is good stuff, and I, I'm I love the fact that we get to talk a little bit more for extended time to get some of this out. So I appreciate you, ladies. So you guys enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, everybody. You're so yeah. great. It's so yes, great. I'm gonna Thank go ahead and stop the recording. Y'all take care. All right. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.